What's up guys, it's Chad here at Bay of Big Plums Fishing at Lechley's Trout Fishery in the Cotswold here again. Decided to make a trip this morning all the way from my hometown. It's over a three hour drive. I'm here with my always Helios 5 weight and this stalking bug. Got my sunshades on, let's see what I can do. Okay guys, here we are. Lechley's Trout Fishery. Let's see how clear the water is. Not overly clear today but that doesn't mean I won't be able to see any big fish let's go and have a slow walk around let's see if I can see anything in the margins it's a lovely fishery lovely venue here at Lechlade Here with my stalking bugs. So I'm gonna probably need to see a big one in the shallows to target it. A little bit more cover over here. where all the videos are filmed over here by the house and the water's quite calm there I might be able to spot something It turned on it. There he is. There he is. Right, I think I scared the fish where I was. There's a two or three massive, massive trout who were cruising in that area, but um, I couldn't get him to take any of my stalking bugs, and it's very, very hard to see what they was up to. Um, one of the trout, big ones, did actually turn on my stalking bug a couple of times and it looked like he was going to take it, but I couldn't quite get the commit that I wanted from him. So, um, what I'll do is I'll rest it and then go from there and see if I can get something a little bit later. Um, the problem is, with the conditions as they are, the water is very, very murky today. Actually, a lot murky than when I came in uh, January. Um, there's only a couple of places it's actually possible to see the trout so um, it's overcast as well and murky water so it doesn't really give conditions conducive to stalking trout but um, yeah we'll give it a go because I've got to be careful because I spend all day stalking that one trout I might get it but then again I might not get it and end up blanking so I want to get myself a a fish to start. I do always like to get myself an initial fish just to get myself on the scorecards and no matter what happens I haven't drove three hours for nothing but right I gave up on the um, stalking just for the time being because there's a lot of people fishing in that area and it seems to be scaring the fish so just got my black and green Martin Williams lure and uh, we're in fish is running well I think it's one of those things it's such a weird day oh, the fish do fight well here it's Martin Williams Martin Williams lures really are top notch you pay your lot of money for them but they just work but it's important to get on the scoreboard guys and get a fish because that's a three hour drive and I don't really want to blank 
almost like fishing in um, December here. You know, when I came in January, pretty much similar conditions. It's windy, the water's very dark. Um, I'm a little bit gutted I couldn't hook into one of those doubles earlier. The first couple of casts when I dropped my little uh, damn little stalking bug in front of the um, a big brownie, it turned on it and it almost engulfed it. Oh. It was so close. and it, I've never had a double brownie, but it was a nice little mark rainbow there, guys. Which would net? And I haven't undone the net properly yet. <laughs> Need to snip it. That's exactly what you don't want to be finding out about. You haven't done your net properly and you got fish. There we go, that'll do. I got the fish, the main thing. It's probably a four or five pounder. Lovely jubbly. I've gone back to the car. I've got my seven weight summer volition. I've got this big brown sparkler fly, which is essentially made for Diva Springs and for Bletchlade by Martin Williams and he reckons the big browns here love this fly if you creep it along with a figure of eight so let's give it a go um, so I've got a few people down there I've told about the big brownies I've been stalking so I've lost my spot I'm too friendly sometimes guys just telling everyone where I've had my, my pools and where I've seen the big fish and you lose your spot because everyone wants that big fish but you know, just because they know it's there doesn't mean they're going to work it. I think the important thing here at Lechley is keep moving, saying so those big fish that I scared earlier, big fish do tend to go back to the same area, they have like a territory. So if I take my time and go back there later they may come back and I'll have another shot at them that is the hilarious fly I fucking know bloody own that is yeah I can get some real distance with this summary been walking around the lake now for a little while um, it's been very very hard if not near enough impossible to spot any fish the water clarity just is not there today. Um, I could deal with lack of water clarity, but then you've got wind as well, which is a double bubble sometimes. Oh, is that a carp or is that a trout? Can't tell if that's a carp or a trout. That one there that just took it. Oh no. Or we've been just walking around trying to stalk them or Yeah. That's um a decent sized fish that. I have to put my hands up in the air here guys and be perfectly honest with you. I do feel a little bit guilty. Um, that guy who you saw in the last clip there was just being friendly, came over to have a chat with me. Um, but I've been stalking these fish at this jetty for about 25 minutes, literally hiding behind trees and creeping around. And there's a massive brownie and a massive rainbow. And this guy came over to talk to me and kind of blundered into my swim and essentially scared both of my big fish away. Um, I had to kind of take a, um, you know, get a grip of myself and take a reality check as a public venue and the guy was trying to be friendly so I do feel a little bit guilty if I was a little bit short with him um, but it's one of those things it will happen if you go around stalking fish you will have other anglers scare your fish away so try not to take it too hard it's you know uh, unless it's an empty day at the fishery it's going to be a common occurrence and at the end of the day they have as much right to be there as you but 
when you're in the moment and you're really kind of set on getting that fish, it's really important to not be really rude to people um, and to try and engage with them because at the end of the day, it's a hobby, it's fun, um, and it's just one of those realities, man. Sometimes you just get fish scared away by other people. So after spending most of my day looking for that double figure brownie, I decided it was time to do some proper fishing and really look around the lake and see what I could see. The cool thing about this trip is although I didn't get my double figure brownie, I actually caught a double figure rainbow, which you're about to see now. My head can run out of battery, so it's only filmed on my phone. Sorry about the janky filming. But the cool thing was I saw this massive rainbow topping by the boat by the house two anglers were there firing laws at this fish and the fish was not interested i looked in my fly box and picked the closest imitation to a hatching midge i had which was a size 16 snatcher i cast to this rising fish and i hit into this 11 pound 11 ounce amazing rainbow trout cast into a rising trout it doesn't get much better than this enjoy the footage guys Think about getting this somewhere ready to net. So I went natural, guys, and I had a fish. Still going, still going. Shaking its head, and that's a tiny little look, too. Tiny, tiny little look. Oh, I'm nervous. I am nervous, guys. Why is my head cam always run out when these things happen for me? Is there a time to put too much pressure on it? This is such a small look. Bring him in. Oh, I know the filming's all over the place, guys. <sighs> That's a double, guys, and look. Had a tiny little thing in its mouth, a little cruncher. A tiny little fly there, a little cruncher when they're feeding on buzzers. Well, that's got to be somewhere near the 10 pound mark.